Once again, this is Prince Dykes here, the Royal Financial Investment Group, coming to you guys with another great video. Today's video topic is going to be never trust a stockbroker, and here is why. But before I jump to that, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, leave me some of your feedback, all of the good stuff. And also, thank you to everybody out there that has tuned in, shared my stuff over the years, all of the great stuff. But enough of that. I don't have a lot of time. I definitely know you guys don't have a lot of time. So never trust a stockbroker, and here's why. So one of my things, give you guys a little bit background about myself is that I always, when I was growing up, I was not growing up, but when I got into start learning about finances, I was like, hey, I want to be a stockbroker, right? I want to be a stockbroker. That's all I knew that was kind of big in the industry. So I went on to school and I earned my associate's degree, my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, and I ended up getting my uh, Series 65 license, Series 63 license. I still got a couple of mentors, life insurance, health, accident, all the different type of licenses. And when I was sick out a couple mentors, I was like, hey, what do I have to do to take the series six or seven exams so I can become a stockbroker? Then, you know, that's when, as I was going through that, I was learning stuff. I started to learn the difference between a stockbroker and a fiduciary. By passing, having my 65 license, it made me a fiduciary. And I was like, well, if a fiduciary can do this, what's the difference between a fiduciary and a stockbroker? So what I started to learn what stockbrokers did and a couple of people that I met that was brokers and a couple of people that I met that was fiduciaries, I was like, wow, this is a big difference. Why didn't I know this when I was younger? A lot of things, right? And this is why I wanted to share with you guys. So this past weekend, not past weekend, but happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. I know it's a couple of days past Thanksgiving. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. But at, at Thanksgiving dinner, I was at uh, one of my friend's house, and it was an ex-stockbroker that was there. He was a stockbroker for about two years. And I asked him, hey, you know, how did you like being a broker or whatever? And he was like, well, you know. I didn't like it. I did it for a year or two. Money was great, but, you know, my morale kind of kicked in. I didn't like what I was doing. My job was to sell. 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 I was just a salesman. Pick up the phone every day, call somebody, have them buy something. I really wanted them to get penny stocks because I got about 15%, 55% commission off of penny stocks. The bigger chip stocks, I didn't get that much, but if they wanted that, I was going to sell it. And then, you know, I hang up the phone. I call somebody else and get them to sell it, you know, uh, get them to buy it. The thing was, hey, I heard you just got paid. Buy some more. Buy some more. If they made money, they didn't make money, whatever it, it kind of uh, went on about, that wasn't my uh, job. You know, my job was to make money off a of commission. And, you know, it's something I already knew, but and it's something I want to share with you guys because I just had somebody inbox me the other day, and I get this quite often. People always ask, they say, hey, you know, Prince, I just got some money. I just did this. I just did that or whatever. Uh, I'm looking, who's the best broker I need to talk to? I need to find a stockbroker and to see, you know, who I, what I should put my money at or whatever. And I was like, well, okay. I said, hey, you know what? Stay tuned. I'm going to make a video about this. And the thing about it is I was the exact same way. I said, hey, you know, hey, I have some money. Man, I need to find a stockbroker. They know something, right? They passed the license exam, all of the good stuff. Let's talk to a stockbroker. Now, I want you to pause this video and look at a video I got in the description box called The Dietitian Versus the Butcher or The Butcher Versus the Dietitian, one or the other. But watch that video. It's only two or three minutes long. And it kind of give you it kind of ties into what I'm saying today as well. But the thing was, a lot of people we look at stockbrokers and we don't know how your stockbroker is paid. How is your stockbroker paid? Most of them are paid by commission. Their job is to sell stuff. A lot of stockbrokers they have funds that they are sponsoring. For example, uh, a company would go to a stockbroker and say, "Hey, if you sell this many of these funds, I will give you this much kickback or whatever." And people don't even know this. They call in, "Hey, I got." 20 grand, what should I do with it? Where should I put it at? And this stockbroker can take it and say, hey, well, you know what? I need to sell an ABC fund that I have a sponsorship with. I can get a big commission off of this. And they will sell it to this person. And and by all legal rights, it's perfectly legal. It's perfectly fine. Now, I'm not sitting here saying every stockbroker is bad and every fiduciary is great. I'm just letting you guys know. I'm just throwing something out there just to get you guys thinking, right? Also, on top of that, when I do live presentations, I ask everybody, what is a stockbroker? And everybody knows. Everybody raises their hand. Oh, a stockbroker is this, that. I said, okay, so what is a fiduciary? Everybody gets quiet. I'm like, okay, well, everybody knows what a stockbroker is. Nobody knows what a fiduciary is. Now, myself, I'm a fiduciary. I'm not sponsored by anybody. You know, I'm not even really into the industry. I don't even do the, you know, I don't practice it. I did it for the knowledge, and one day I will do it later on in the future. But as of right now, so just to let you guys know, so disclaimer, I'm not out here, you know, telling you something to sway you or to tell you anything. I'm just telling you what I know, putting out facts, let you make your own decision, right? So the thing is, what a fiduciary does, what a fiduciary is, 
is a fiduciary is someone you call in and say, hey, I got $20,000. I want to invest it or whatever. A fiduciary is somebody who will look at your whole picture and they will say, hey, you know what? Stocks may not be best for you. What may be best for you is maybe an annuity. What may be best for you is to build a trust. What may be best for you is to get life insurance. What may be best for you right now is at this time is to maybe buy a stock or a mutual fund or whatever. They are not tied into a particular stock of making commissions off of sales. Fiduciary makes money off of what they manage. The more money that they manage, the more money they make, right? They usually get 1% or 2% off of what they manage. So it doesn't matter if your money is in cash. It doesn't matter if your money is in uh, a mutual fund. It doesn't matter if your money is in wherever it's at. They get money, so they make their money off of what they manage. So it's not as biased, right? And another thing, like a stockbroker. A lot of stockbrokers, when you look at a mutual fund, hey, I got a mutual fund, just about everybody has a mutual fund, right? Now, when the market is doing crappy or getting ready or is turning, making a downturn and becoming bearish, going down, right, declining, a stockbroker is going to be a little afraid to tell somebody to take your money out this mutual fund and put it in cash. Tell you why? I don't make any, as a stockbroker, I don't make money by your money sitting in cash. I must have it invested somewhere, right? I must have it in a commission. So a lot of them would say, hey, just hold it out, wait it out, because the longer you hold, every month it's called a 1-2-B. Tech one fees. I'm, I'm pretty sure I talked about it in other videos. It's the fees of how your broker is paid. Most of them are paid every month that you have your money into this mutual fund. You pull your money out of the mutual fund, they don't make any money, right? So what I'm saying is that what I what I am saying is that it could be some type of conflict of interest. A broker doesn't have to act within the best interest of their clients. That's what it boils down to. A broker does not have any legal documents that says they must act within the best interest of their client. You say, hey, I want to put my money here. Hey, well, put it over here. You want it? Okay, boom. I'm here to broker the deal. Whereas in a fiduciary, they are held by law to act within the best interest of their client or they can go to jail. They can go to prison for not following what their clients tell them. For example, you say, hey, I want to be conservative with my money. And a fiduciary goes and make your money very aggressive so they can make a commission or something crazy like that. They can face jail time. So they're going to act within your best interest, whether, hey, you know what? This person's money is better off in cash. This person's money is better off in a mutual fund. This person is better off with an annuity. This person is better off with life insurance or whatever. They're going to recommend the whole picture, right, versus a broker. A lot of them are just getting paid to pay commissions, right? So if I am a person who's looking to put my money somewhere, who would I want to, where would I want to put it? This is your personal opinion. My personal opinion, I would want to go with a fiduciary. And that's what changed my mind about becoming a stockbroker. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what a fiduciary was, or whatever. But as I learned, I said, "Wow, I want to be a fiduciary. That's what I want to do." So when I went off and got the certification and the license and stuff like that, I didn't no longer want to become a stockbroker. So, but the thing is, the general public, ninety-eight percent of the people that I know, spoken to, done live appearances, most of them they sit and they say, wow, "Fiduciary? I don't, I don't know what that is, or whatever. I know what a broker is. I call him." So if you watch that video, The Butcher versus The Dietitian, and listen to what I'm saying, these are straight facts, right? If I was looking to find someone or some place to put my money, I would go with a fiduciary over a stockbroker. Because tell you why, a stockbroker, if they work for a company, they are there to sell you product. That's it. This person calls in, they have money. I'm not going to recommend you any other fund. I'm going to tell you, hey, you need to buy this, 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 this. And they don't have to disclose to you how they're earning their commission. Fiduciary has to they have to disclose that, hey, guess what? It could be a conflict of interest. I'm recommending you this this uh, investment interest. I do get paid by this investment interest. I wanted to let you know, and you must sign a document saying that you acknowledge that you know that it could be a possible conflict of interest. Whereas a broker, he doesn't have to do that. You said you wanted it. I said, I think you should get it. I broke with the deal. I get my commission. On to the next person. Pick up the phone, find somebody else, right? Whereas in the fiduciary, if he does that, they can be faced with jail time. So that's why I say you should never trust a stockbroker. I don't want to make the video too long. It is getting a little long, so I got to get out of here. Anyway, I hope this video was good. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share all of the good stuff. Until the next time, you guys already know what to do. Be safe.